Good morning, everyone. Michael from NCY Store. You can see the weather here is not the greatest weather of all, but you know what? It's perfect timing for us to get our scooter prepped up ready, especially spring is coming around the corner. Um, we found out one thing that uh, might help us to test out if there's a gasket seal. I got this from one of my customers becoming a really good friend. Uh, I got some masking tape, and he said just go ahead and mask the area there that you think it might have a still a gasket leak. But I'm, I'm thinking we're not having to, but let's just go and do it anyway. Let's try this test out. We got a little bit of little, little paper masking tape and see if it puts any kind of a blow smoke on there or anything like that. It's not going to force it to just, uh, you know, rip apart or anything like that. And then we also found another issue that we had at Resolve, actually. Um, you remember our dashboard here wasn't getting license signal. What was was actually, I think it was a blue wire, like I mentioned before, probably perhaps. And APM actually uh, helped me troubleshoot it uh, because um, we pulled the blue wire out from that green and uh, orange wire from the gauge cluster. And pretty much it brought back the gauge cluster again. So our RPM's working, everything's working. And let me go and get you the keys so that way I can show you. But I'm not gonna start the engine yet because I found out also another thing is um, I left my uh, gas thing on unintentionally, but it was for a good purpose. I guess now I can see what happened there because I thought I could just leave it on and never close it unless I park in a like incline or something where it makes an overflow on the, the file valve. But I guess maybe because it's a bigger tie strap or a medium sized regular tie strap, it probably doesn't have enough uh, that little you know socket there to actually um secure it so what we're going to do is we're going to place that with a little small one and because we had a good result with the small one before even though it was even tilted uh horizontally we didn't have um i mean yeah horizontally we didn't have any kind of leaks so, but you can see here there's a leftover from the gas leak i used the gas leak to clean up the engine a little bit more here and there so it wasn't a bad thing but still you don't want to have gas leak you know just to have gas leak so we're going to go and take care of that as well so let me go and get the engine here so I can show you the gauge cluster is working let me go ahead and probably tie strap it here or something like that so I'll be right back oh I totally forgot I could just actually pause I'm still using my note 5 because what I found out was the GoPro it works great and all but it was just wasn't allowing me to actually zoom in to the areas that I thought and also backing up 4k 120 minute recording of 4k was forever I had to actually just upload slice because I tried to use a merger program not only that GoPro they call it chaptering just for security of your video being damaged. They will actually cut your video in sections like every eight minute intervals and I had to actually stitch them back together. It was a pain in the butt and when I didn't use a stitching program, I guess I didn't get the right one because it actually froze a little bit. So I decided to just go ahead and upload whatever I can with the 4K. But more than likely, I'm probably not going to be recording in 4K anymore because 4K at 120 minutes uh, took over, I think it was like 18 gigabytes. That's a lot of gigabytes when your typical one in 20 minute video shouldn't take more than probably the most, maybe a, a gigabyte and a half. So 18 gigabyte versus a, a gigabyte and a half or 1080p, I rather just do 1080p. I don't have a 4K TV anyway, and I'm sure most people do have devices that support 4K, but I think the 1080 is probably just good enough for seeing in the small screen. Most people usually use their mobile to watch their videos anyway, uh, just to learn. I don't think anyone's gonna go into the big screen TV and try to follow along. Uh, for one thing, it's more convenient just to actually just watch it um, in your hand, you know, unless you have one of those cool big TVs that's sitting right there on top of your bedside, and that might be worthwhile. But yeah, for right now, I'm just going to record in 1080p. I'm going to stick to my Note 5. I'm gonna, I actually just had it mounted now on my helmet, so I'll show you guys that when we start talking about our gears and stuff. So here we go. I just want to show you that the gauge cluster and everything works now. The battery's here. Not any special uncover or anything like that. Just want to protect it for any short contact someone might put. Okay, so look at there you go. See how the lights are coming full now? And so now if I put my high beam, see there? It works now. See the high beam also shows right there. So everything works. All it was was I pulled the blue wire out of that socket uh, harness from the green and yellow wire. And um, so our RPM should work too. I don't want to fire the engine yet because we're going to do that uh, cylinder head gasket test. I should leave my gas now on. That way I always forget to turn it on when I start my engine. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it on now. And I don't want to do it too long, but maybe, you know what, let's turn it off because I'm going to go ahead and put a new tie strap on there at the same time, okay? So let's go ahead and just turn this back off. Yeah, but I just want to share with you that you'll see the RPM will work. The R it will rave up again. And then also, of course, our battery meter and everything indicates. Oh, actually, I, I didn't focus on that. Let me see it out real quick. I'm going to put my key back in. See, there you go. See how our battery meter is coming up before I didn't even do that for us. Our signal light flashing really bright. Nice. And then not only that though, but our alarm here. That's what I was wondering why would, uh, when you turn on the key, the headlights automatically come on. Because what happened was, I guess it was 
the blue wire was um, you know giving it some kind of short to make it always stay on that's why these side running lights normally with the keys not on it shouldn't even come on so here we go. I'm gonna unlock it See that? okay now I'm gonna leave the keys on so you can see what the actual supposed to be the running light only so with the key on when the ignition not starting your main running light shouldn't actually come on or sometimes they don't even come on for certain model scooter but mine only comes on with the ignition start see that's what it's supposed to be these side ones are not supposed to come on as running lights either kind of conserve and the only thing that should come on here is just your tail light your running uh, brake lights I call them running brake light area but that's where the back tail light is so you're running back light still red Okay, and then when the ignition is started, then you'll, I will normally have my center light some on. So, so yeah, all it was was this little simple wire that I had to pull back out of the harness here. You can see that blue wire, remember? This is the auto start wire. So I think it works in conjunction with the orange wire. The orange wire turns on the ignition uh, here. You know, it's the orange wire is your ignition wire, right? So it's tapped to here, and then the blue wire sends the pulse. So we're probably gonna maybe try to see if we could tap into this little start button here. So we'll find out. Is kill switch is off, I hope. Okay. All right, so we're gonna find that out eventually. Um, but yeah, I pulled it out. It was going to the D1 I had here. See that? Little, it was tapped right here into this little green and yellow wire right here. Not the yellow and white wire, nor the black and white wire. It was just this D1. You can see it says D1 here. D1 all the way right there. So remember this was joined it here. I figure I, t I found it the way that was same continuity, but what we really want is for it to actually, let me turn off the engines to conserve battery. Um, what we really want is to actually tap into the, the red and yellow wire, which we did see from the, the um, throttle here that we had that wire there. So yeah, uh, APM was trying to help me out. He's still uh, trying to figure out, you know, how come his worked just fine because his only thing he had to do was create a, connection here from the back tail light harnesses and you can see where mine ends mine ends right there on the tail light so so you have that that yellow and green wire that's pretty much the yellow same yellow green wire that follows through here and then the only thing is I tapped it to my um, lights here and also my Gibby harness which is right here so all these wires coming on top is pretty much from the the add-on tail light as well as the uh, Gibby harness so that's about it on that one right there. You can see here, these two wires traces down and connects to my little add-on light that I had for extra tail light. So we're gonna go and try to figure that out eventually, see what it is. All I know is that blue wire, we might need to do a relay because it's probably not giving enough longer signal to turn over the high torque starter motor solenoid. If you realize when you start, when I realize when I start my engine, I hold this down for at least about a good, you know, maybe a second and a half and then it sends the, enough pulse signal here, you know, the battery voltage, to be able to tell the solenoid it's ready to go, and then it triggers the starter motor. So the blue wire sends a pulse of like a burst, only a quick burst, so it's like me tapping this right here and expecting it for it to start. So that might be an issue right there, it might be needing to build a relay for this setup, but we'll see, um, so we'll find out that eventually. So for right now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and tape this, so we can see we actually still have a get head gasket leaks before we start putting all our fan shroud and everything. Oh, I found out also another thing is the 139 QMB fan shroud, that little rubber that goes on the cylinder head, actually will fit your um, 157 QMJ or 150 uh, stock or whatever this is, this size cylinder head. It's actually the same. Um, so um, I sent it off to the gentleman that helped me out with this idea here. I gave him it as a gift. So he's going to go ahead and try it out. But I did, uh, did a dry fit on my... You know 171 uh, Tata big bore kit and then actually just wrap perfectly that little rubber boot because I know most of the uh, 150 doesn't come with that rubber boot that comes right here before you put the fan shroud the little rubber kind of rubber band that goes all around here just to just to insulate it a little bit more to get the air to keep circulating in the fan area and not escape out through the the cylinder head right here so yeah that little rubber like a rubber band almost you could call it a you know an o-ring or something like that that covers all around the cylinder head area so uh, speaking of covering up we're going to go ahead and cover it up with some good uh paper masking tape and we're going to see if we get any kind of a blown smoke or anything like that that lays on that little sticky uh adhesive in so that should be able to tell us so let me go ahead and set this right here and we'll get started on seeing it let me see if i can bring the camera one good thing about the note is you know i can see what you guys are seeing so i don't have to guesstimate i know that the gopro takes a lot of view and unfortunately, I had it set where it was like a, 
fishball kind of view. And uh, and then I didn't realize that I need to bring in closer in or see the like the depth of it like this. But it was pretty good shot still, you know. Uh, I think uh, the battery on 4K and then the stabilization wasn't turned on because the fact is it's on 4K, there's no stabilization. I think it only, stabilization wouldn't even work too on a certain of a widescreen with so many uh, frames per second. I don't know all the technicality of that, but I'm learning. Um, but I did melt in my hammer, I did, <laughs> helmet, not hammer, helmet, and it does look really nice. And uh, I'm looking forward to implementing and taking it out for a spin in natural daylight and see how it really rides. I know it adds a little bit more weight to my helmet. I mean, it's a modular helmet already, so that's actually a little bit heavier already. It's already weighing at four pounds before my um, built-in, what do you call it? Oh, I got, before my built-in, what do you call it, Xena uh, thing there. Let me just get the tape out. So I'm gonna get enough here. I think this should be enough. Um, before my Xena, uh, built, uh, you know, integrated uh, audio. Too bad that they just yeah, don't know how way to make that Bluetooth from your phone work with the GoPro because that will solve all problems. Because the, the Bluetooth microphone works on the phone, then that means my integrated uh, headset for the Xena should also work. I don't even know if I can get this to really cover the area though. Okay, here we go. So get sticky. Let's try to see if we can get through. Okay, let's do that. All right, so I'm trying to try to do this cover between the cylinder, cylinder jug, and then the cylinder head itself, because that's where the last blown head gasket was. So I'm gonna do my best to wrap around, try to give it a good seal. Coming from the top now, you probably can't tell yet, but I'll show you as soon as I get this wrapped it. Not too shabby. Coming along. And then we're probably gonna do a little bit, uh, I'm gonna try to integrate a cup holder. Uh, I'm using the ram mount, the little ball mechanism that locks. So I figured, you know what, I'm putting everything else into the scooter. Might as well at least say, uh, hey look, everything and including the kitchen sink. So I'm gonna put a cup holder as well. And I'm gonna see if I can get that installed there on a certain good surface, hard enough. Oh boy. All right, so <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, so unlike the GoPro, um, this doesn't have stabilization where it gets shocked easily. So that's what happens there. But it does get you and it doesn't take from you. Stitch the, uh, well, if I want it to, it still won't be a problem. I can stitch the images together. But normally, Lease records a little longer than eight minute intervals. I mean, there was like eight minute segment of the GoPro videos of my 4K shoot. And I'm thinking, man, that's a lot of files for an hour and 20 minutes. You know, you're looking at almost close to 10 individual uh, video files. Oh, I just slammed my knee on the center kickstand. Oh, I feel that now. Woohoo! Cuckoo! All right, <laughs> let me shake that off. That burned a little bit. Ooh, that was fun. Not really. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, that's what's painful. Oh man, pain and pleasure is the motivating factor to do anything, right? Okay, so anyway, I got that pretty, looks like it's pretty sealed off here. Let me just go another round just to make double check. And this is what we're mainly concerned about is the base gasket. I mean the uh, cylinder head gasket that was leaking before. We want to make sure if it's not going to leak again. Alright, so it looks like a pleat nice kind of cover view here. Also, I'm going to put another little piece here also on the, uh, I can cover it up myself actually. So you can see here, it's pretty much, let me take it off the hook here, sorry. Yep. See here, it's pretty much wrapped all around. So it's going under just fine. There we go. Can I see another side? Okay, so what we're doing is we're wrapping a masking tape and hoping to be able to get the exhaust to if it comes out here leave a leave an impression that way we can actually capture instead of you know going by you know, the naked eye there we go you see that's wrapped around there so everything is covered up uh, pretty much from the base to the head here and then what we're going to do is i'm going to also put another piece of masking tape i'm going to rainbow it over like this 
that way I can capture if there's any of these guys that are leaking. Again, we torque this as much as we can to spec. Um, so I put 10 foot pounds on that one. I put the cylinder head torque to 180 inch pound. These are inch pounds. So 10 foot pounds was about, I did about 90, I want to say. Uh, I'm sorry, no, not, I did more than 90. Uh, I probably did about 110 inch pounds in order to get uh, to about 10 foot pounds in there. So what I'm going to do now is trying to go ahead and put a little bit more tape to cover this guy right here. Let's wrap him around. So where's that tape? Oh, there we go. Okay, so just peel some more off. I think that should do it. You don't need a lot. I went double over. I shouldn't do that. You don't need to. One's enough just to capture any kind of black fumes or anything on there. And then we'll we'll rip the tape carefully and we'll be able to inspect it and see, you know, what's really protruding out there. I think I might have to go poke a hole through here. Forget about that. This tape is actually allows you to do that. And then join it back if you need to. So we're just looking to capture any kind of a shh, any kind of you know dirt or anything like that. Hey. Now, since we put it on here and we pressed on it, we haven't wiped it clean. More than likely, we probably will get some dirt smudges, so we can't really assume it's actually coming from our exhaust. So now that that's sealed, we're going to go ahead and seal one more thing, and that's going to be our fuel line. So we're going to take that guy out, and we're going to put him with a smaller one, a smaller tie strap. I guess the tallest my strap has a little bit more uh, finer teeth that can get in a little bit more precise in there instead of the medium tie strap, which we're going to have to cut that guy out. Cut him out or yank him out first. We'll see what we can do. We can probably yank him out first. And gasoline is going to probably spill everywhere. I don't think it can go the other way around. So let's see what I can do. Maybe I can do it really quickly. Get a few drops here and there. It's not going to hurt us. Okay, let me go and find the little tall, small tie strap. Also, we got our Allen sockets here. We're going to be able to torque now our Allen screws. And we also got some Gorilla uh, gel glue. We're going to be able to actually glue some of those plastic pieces. I'm hoping that, you know, those plastic pieces are not so much oil that super glue might not be able to do it or not. We'll have to get another Sporm special super glue. Loctite, I think, makes one. But we'll see. Uh, let me go and get that little tie, small tie strap. I did kind of... I brought it out here already, but maybe I didn't. Oh, where are you, little tie strap? Maybe I'll put it in the little bucket already. Okay. Also, we got some 10 NCY, uh, 12 grams NCY rollers. And then we'll put, we'll put our brake master cap back on as soon as we uh, do the brake part. So, we got quite a few things to roll out here mm -hmm. okay I see the big one here I don't need the big one I need that, that small one so let me go ahead and I thought I brought it out but I guess I didn't let me see if I I might have it inside so let me be right back okay I got it we got one tie strap here. I couldn't find the rest of the pack, but I, list, I remember I had one somewhere stashed, so I was able to find that one. All right, so here we go. Oh, another thing that also I want to mention too, uh, APM shared this with me. The reason why that some of my gasket spray didn't stay on my gasket, especially when it's brand new like that, or even, you know, um, you need to be prepped up again. I mean, you could put some rubber, rubbing alcohol and just kind of clean it dry with some rubbing alcohol. And your copper spray will probably normally will probably stick a little bit better than uh, my year old can. Maybe it could be because it's old too. But yeah, normally what you want to do is with the the metal base gasket, not the paper one. Okay, don't don't put alcohol in your paper one. It's gonna dry it up even more. But for your metal one, you can clean it with some rubbing alcohol first before you apply the copper spray, and it'll stick much better uh, as soon as it gets a nice little uh, clean surface. Because there might be some kind of a, like a wax film on there. That might prevent the copper spray from uh, sticking. So that's probably the reason why it didn't stick. Was um, I needed to actually, um, you could say, prep it first. Speaking of which, where is my copper spray? I need to prep it first before you do try spray it on there. Just clean it with some good alcohol. Again, that tip is from APM Scootering. You can check his YouTube out. He's got a lot of stuff on the electronics. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, you know, prep up again. We're gonna go ahead and 
pull this guy out here or try to cut him out or whatever we need to do first. I think we could probably cut him out. Let's see here. Let's bring the big guns again. There we go. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I really miss my little small dielectric tube versus that big tube only because it has that little that narrow thing. Yeah, dielectric you can buy and keep it for a while. But it's just the convenience of having a smaller tube, you know? I'm gonna go and try cut that tube out. There you go. Focus on them. That's what I like about the Note 5 or just, you know, using your mobile phone to record. You get a little bit closer and you can actually see what your viewers are seeing. So what I'm gonna do is try to break them out. Let's see if I can do that. Be much easier. Maybe I can just try to pull them out first. Okay, here we go. He might slip off. What happens is gasoline creates some kind of oil residue and it can easily slip off. Easily, supposedly. So this guy's not gonna give us a, a, a yet. So I'm gonna try to grip him off. There we go. That wasn't actually hard at all. Okay, in fact, we don't even have to take it off. Um, so if this guy slips off, then I could just slip the small one in and tie, tie him and go. There we go, see there. Nice, hopefully I didn't cut anything into the right. You can see here how it creates a little protruding there. Gasoline is just flooded in there. Uh, preferably keep it dry, so. But this is where it actually bumps in, so whatever's left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our smaller tie strap. You can compare the two heads together. You can see what I'm talking about. This is a small one, and this is your normal regular size one. It's good for holding cable and everything else that, but for little fuel lines and stuff like that, go with the smaller one. Uh, you won't regret it. That's another tip from APM Scootering, by the way. So here we go. We're gonna go and put that guy in here. Curve him around. That way he gets into position first, and then we can slide him down. You can even probably pre-loop him in here on the top. Sorry, I'm blocking your view. There we go. Yeah, the small one does matter. It's not that stronger. You can get in a little tighter area, a smaller, precise area, and actually really tie it down. Or, or clamp it tightly closed, so there we go. There we go. I only have one left, so hopefully I don't break this guy. Me saying that might more than likely will probably do what exactly I said not to do. All right, but we'll do our best here. See that? Wow, you can see the air bubbles already squeezing a little bit out. Okay, so what I still want to do is give it a good tug because it's not gonna, it's not gonna be that tight if I don't tug at it. So let me see if I can pull it. Get an angle here where I have a little bit more leverage. And what I could do is probably do a little twist, alligator twist. You know how the alligator, well, you see him. Not like you knew personally like I did. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that, snap right off. That's fine. As long as it snaps in the tightest area we can, we're good. Okay, so we got that there. You can see how this thing right here, I can still poke it. Fluid like wants to come out, sort of. But yeah, hopefully this will do the trick. Um, because it is, it's just kind of laying down on there, you know? But yeah, maybe this will do the trick. We won't have that gas leak anymore. In fact, I'm so confident right now, I'm just gonna leave it on. So I'm gonna turn on the knob here. All right, come on, there we go. Turn on the knob and we'll leave it on. And again, I haven't fired this up for the last, what, a day and a half? So let's go ahead and test it out now and see if we get like that blown uh, head gasket or anything like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the camera systematically here. That way if you guys see anything, you know, you guys will see it first shot here. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to start the scooter up. Just kind of stay focused in that area there. Now I got covered up, so but when we unravel, we'll see if there's any smoke or any kind of debris. So turn the engine. Okay. Oh, by the way, we have our carburetor tuned to about uh, the richer mixer screw or idle mixer screw. 
we turn it to about full turn and a half. Before, by default, it was a full turn and a quarter. So we increased that. We're, here, let me go and point out what I'm talking about while I'm talking about it. That way, just a good idea. We had this turn. Let me turn this off again. Our gauge is working. You'll see me rave up and everything. Okay, so let's go back here. Sorry, you guys couldn't see it last time. You see that right there? That's actually a, that's right there's a, that's actually our closing mark too, but it's not closed right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a righty tidy that way you can see how many turns I did, okay? You can count with me. Okay, here we go. Half a turn. Full turn. Full turn and a half right there. See that? That's a full turn and a half we did. Okay, so I'm gonna go back out again the same way. Let me get the resolution on here. See, with the GoPro, I couldn't actually know where I was aiming it for you, so I didn't actually show you guys this, but now I can show it to you. But the only thing about it is like, the GoPro has advantages, has that shock proof. It doesn't go easily berserk when it's just a little tap hit. Okay, so we're gonna back out, okay? We're gonna go counterclockwise to reach it a little bit better. Cause right now it's all the way closed, it's lean. Leaned out, meaning closed, done. It's not giving it anything. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Half a turn. Full turn. And then, full turn and a half. So this is where we're back at right here. Full turn and a half, straight vertical. In our spot anyway, you can see that? So this is where we believe our engine's running. And then I'm not actually putting this on right here. You know, some people leave it on, it floods. So ours, we don't have to anymore. You only use this for instances where it's extremely, extremely hard to actually kick to, uh, start the scooter over. You might need to use your manual choke to help it. And what that does is just floods the float bowl a little bit more. But we're good, our cable is tight, meaning there's no extra loose slack or playing peekaboo with that little end of the sleeve. Next time I do take it off, I plan to put a heat shrink here to protect any kind of dust from getting into the little crisis area there. That's kind of open because this has it nicely sealed here. The lock that was right here, we extended it more. Instead of extending here, I figured, you know, we can also extend it here some more too, if worse can the worst need it. But we're good. So I'm gonna turn this guy on. The battery's showing. Let's see actually what the battery level is right now. It's a good way before we fire this up, right? This is where we're at on our, on our battery level. Turn to our bolts. I can use it right there on that little terminal screw. Might be very, oh. Yeah, 3.21. We'll keep this here because we need to keep testing it. All right, so we'll turn this eye on. So it's over 13 volts, but see our gauge there is not always accurate. It looks like it's gonna make it to the 12 volts, but we already know it's actually over 12. So we're gonna go and turn on the kill switch. Not turn it off, this is turning off the kill, which turn off actually what does the kill switch, right? It's a very confusing term, I know. So anyway, we're turning it on to allow it to start. Okay, we're holding our brake lever. Our P is on for brakes. Then we're gonna fire it up. And then our gas is turned on, which I have a habit of always keeping it closed. Look at that. Almost one slight, maybe two seconds push. I'll hold it for a little longer. Oh, actually I was gonna set the camera here so you guys can actually see it, what am I doing? All right, so here we go. Wait till it starts over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably have to hold that little start button for a little bit longer. That's probably why the blue remote starter is not doing it because it's not giving them a longer pulse, uh, stabilizing the 13 plus volts uh, to go into our solenoid line. But yeah, let's go and let me go hold a little longer. One, two, three. Wait. I'm gonna give it a little throttle too. Let me give, give it a little throttle. Cold start. The longer I hold it, the more I want to start. Okay. So I'm gonna have to hold it and then turn the throttle. So it's prematurely dying too early. I'm 
trying to actually give it throttle too. So all I have to do is maybe I can, yeah, I can, I can lift it up myself here. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is just pull and tug on the throttle cable here myself. That way it's like almost pulling it, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna start the engine and I'm gonna pull on this myself because I need, I need, I need one hand to hold the brake lever, unfortunately. So that's why I figure this hand right here can pull the throttle. I could have done it all in the same thing, but I just want to give you an idea of what I'm doing. Here we go. I'm going to hold the brake lever, hold the start button. There we go. Oh, it was. Okay, let me go and give it a little bit more throttle. Oh, you know what? How's my fuel? I didn't even check that. My fuel seems to be okay. Well, let me go and make sure because last time we had that problem with the fuel. Okay, so let me get this guy out of the latch. I think my fuel is okay. I know we've been going to the very last few drops, but I still see like there's still jiggering. There's still fuel in there. Not a lot, but it's still enough to be not a problem. And then our fuel gauge here shows at least a little bit left. You know, less than 10% maybe. Alright, so either... Okay, so let me do this again. See my spark plug is pushed all the way in. Yeah, spark plug boots pushed all the way in. Now I didn't want to use this, so let me go ahead and pull this out now. See, because I think I might have maybe left the the fuel in there. It might have actually flooded our float bowl and makes it harder to start. Now. Okay, let me go ahead and drop this down. Maybe I had to blow out some old air or something like that. Oh, what's happened there? Nothing getting away, I hope. Yeah, nothing. Probably blew out some of the old air or something like that. But you can see that what I did that was hard to start. I pull it up, and it helped me over. So let's go and start again. Okay, so it might be our enricher screw a little bit. It's quiet though. Okay, let's check it out and make sure our battery's charging. For it. Okay, it's 13 point something, so our battery hasn't got enough time to charge. Yeah, I think it might be, we need to turn a little bit more of this. Hold all you. Okay. It kind of had to warm up. But yeah, if that's the case, then let's see if we can Take this a little bit more counterclockwise, get a little bit more richer. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to the screw here. Turn another counterclockwise. Yeah, it's still, yeah, because we counterclockwise it. So now it's actually almost a turn 0.75, a full turn in 75%. Part of another turn, so this is right there. So let's go and start this again. This one's closed. Running, but prematurely dying. It might be just our idling. Oh, it's still, still locking up on us. So let's do this again. Alright, so it's actually prematurely dying, uh, so we'll figure out what's going on next after this. So we'll come back and take a look at it.